Hello, this is the English flannel. <laughs> Wait, could you imagine if I actually introduced myself as flannel? No, I'll introduce with my real name, Jack. Hello, this is Jack, also known as the English flannel. And this is my second channel, actually, because my first one is used for YTPs. And I don't want to add these videos onto that channel, so I'm going to make a second channel. So this one would be more music stuff and railway stuff. So as you can see, these videos for the time being will be in the style of a still image, which changes showing what I'm talking about. Very simple setup, but it, for the time being, I think it'll work. But is, is this actually my second channel? Well, it would be wrong because it's actually my first channel and English Flannel was made as my second channel because this was going to be made for gaming content, but that's, I'm not a gamer anymore most of the time. So this original channel will be my second channel. Hope that makes sense. And we're going to start this with talking about one of my favorite albums as it's turning 10 in a new series I'm going to call, wait for it, Flanniversaries. <laughs> where we talk about albums that turn 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50, and this series could go on for years. So it's never going to run out of steam because there will always be albums to talk about and we'll eventually talk about my absolute favourites. And we may even talk about some stinkers, you know? So without further ado, <laughs> let's begin. So one of my all-time favourite bands, Cult of Luna. They're a sludgy post-metal band from Sweden. They've released nine albums, nine full-length albums, some EPs, some split EPs, I think, and a few other covers. And I'll be talking about their sixth studio album, Vertical, with a K, which replaces the C. I'll be using the very reliable Rachel Music as a source of when it was released, and it was released on January 25th, 2013, so it will turn 10 years old when this video is uploaded. There are nine tracks. The album spans 65 minutes. Some of the tracks are quite long. There's a nine, 19 minute song. Their longest ever song they've recorded in that is Vicarious Redemption. So this album is, has a more industrial sound compared to Cult of Lunar albums that had a more earthly sound before this. It's very cold, very metallic, and not like, oh, it's metal, but it's very claustrophobic too. The album opens up with a two minute introduction the one which comprises of a melody that does repeat itself a few times throughout the album i must say it's a very good introduction sets the scene and it's quite a beautiful sounding melody too but it's not in its best form i'd say so then we go into the single release from the album i the weapon despite it being a fan favorite i'd say it's my least favorite off the album i do think the second half of the song drags a bit it's not my favorite of the crescendos that Cold of Luna are very well known for. But the first half of the song, it's heavy, it's fierce. I do like that side of the song. Of course, you got Johannes. Uh, yeah, uh, when, I, when I pronounce these names, Lord, Lord help me. He does most of the vocals on the album, Johannes, uh, as the other screamer of the band. Well, they, he left a few years before this album. And you do get a little bit of clean singing as well from Frederick Kielberg. Yeah, it's a pretty good opener, but it is my least favourite off the album. So we go into track three, Vicarious Redemption, and what a journey this song is. This is, like I said, the longest song Cult of Luna ever recorded, beating Dark City Dead Man off of Somewhere Along the Highway. The song opens with just a single bit of ambience, and then it slowly builds, 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 and you get more and more noises thrown in. And then it really gets going about seven minutes in. Although may, many could argue that the intro could be a bit shorter. Um, I do think it, you do need that time. The album does need to breathe. It makes the heavier moments heavier. So then the first verse is coming about eight minutes in or so. So yeah, you got your fairly standard Cult of Luna riffing throughout. But then about 11 minutes in, the song drastically changes into, I kid you not, a dubstep breakdown. Dubstep. Cold of Luna, who would have known? But it actually fits in quite well with this song. It fits in with the more industrial sound of this album. And then there's sort of a, it's not really a solo per se, it's more like a very prominent guitar lead. And then the heavy, heavy finishing at the end, where they just go to, well, I think, I think it's tuned to drop A or something. 
Yep, you just get a low A note pummeling through your eardrums to finish off the song. Vicarious Redemption. Right, the sweep. It's another interlude. Uh, you get, you do get a little bit of screaming on this song, a few words, and then well, there's not much to say about this song. Synchronicity. Now, it took me many listens to get. I don't know if many other people have found out, but this song is a very peculiar structure. It is it has a very symmetrical song structure. What I mean by that is, it starts off with a single note of guitar, and then the drums come in, the first vocals and then some synths and or something but then halfway through and then you'll get the same melody from the one exactly halfway through the song i'm talking exactly like after two repeats of the melody you're at the halfway point and then it'll have another two repeats and then everything you've heard up to that point happens in reverse and that is that is a very peculiar structure to a song i don't think there's many songs if if there's any other song that does that, I mean, let me know. Although I have checked, I don't think this song's the halfway. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure this song isn't the halfway point in the album. If it was, that would have been amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, very, very cool song. Okay, on to the next song, Mute Departure. This is where you get the first instance of clean singing. Well, there are a few backing vocals on previous tracks, but this is the first time you do get a few verses sung cleanly. And they do fit in very well here droney kind of opening and then it builds once again Cot of Luna are very good at building up their songs and then the chorus is screamed and then it's very subdued again in the verses and then it's just how quiet how quiet and then it there's a very explosive ending to this song probably yeah another one of the heavier moments it's like a shorter version of vicarious redemption Whereas it starts quiet and then gets loud towards the end. And then you've got a 45 second song which is, okay, it is, it is the weakest song of the album. If you include interludes it is nothing special. But it's only 45 seconds so when I listen to the album I'll listen to it anyway. It's got there's barely no time. And then we get my favourite song in the album, In Awe Of. I, I was in awe of this song. Obviously get the obvious pun out of the way. Where to start? So if Synchronicity isn't the heaviest song, this one is. So you get a couple verses and then there is a as it goes somewhere and it's like oh we're building up this early but it for fear not it, it doesn't build up throughout the whole song it's like up until halfway through the song that melody around four minutes is probably the best moment of the album or maybe one of my favorite cult of luna moments of all time if not my favorite cult of luna moment although it isn't my favorite cult of luna song um, the second half of the song while it does fall down a bit is still fantastic I mean the song is I'd say well over a 9 out of 10. Well into 9.5 out of 10. And then the closing song, Passing Through, where it's entirely clean vocals. There is no drums. It's just a droning guitar line and uh, Frederick singing once again. And some of the lyrics as well. The lyrics off this album. Like the other ones, I don't really like pay attention to the lyrics, but these lyrics are just grim. Like You can imagine that some dystopian funeral all is quiet empty streets all is quiet the city sleeps close my eyes on my knees and time is passing me by absolutely haunting performance one of my favorites off this album and i mean i do love an explosive ending to the album but hanging on to its final embers that kind of ending can work really well as well and then after the verses you get that mel you get a melody and it took me once again, a few listens to realise that is the same melody from the one from Synchronicity, but in a much more sombre tone. Let me tell you, like this, this does not sound like a happy ending to an album. Obviously, this album was inspired by Fritz Lang's Metropolis, which I've not watched because I'm not a film person. But I am well, I'm trying to fix that this year, maybe. There is a bonus track, The Flow Reversed. I won't talk about that one as much, but that is a pretty cool song as well. But if, in all honesty, Passing Through is the ending to the album. In fact, I listened to this song a lot through the lockdown because it, the lyrics do describe that kind of environment was like. All is quiet, empty streets. Time is passing you by. Because, well, that was, a, that was a very quiet moment for many people's life. Only time was passing them by. 
And then you also check out the acoustic version Cove Luna did um, of this song, equally as mesmerizing. But yeah, those are my takes, my opinions on this album. What are you, What do you guys think of this album? Because I think it is a very good album, and if you're into sludgy post-metal, it is worth... I would say definitely listen to this. So, well, if you are into sludgy post-metal, you likely have listened to this, but if you just get into the genre and you want something cold, industrial, unforgiving, but yet harrowing, check this one out. So, Cold Luna, Vertical, listen to it. Or don't. Unless you're... Well, if you don't like this genre, then don't listen to it. Or, or still listen to it. Just, it might change your mind. Alright, till next time, goodbye.